Hello once again, my loyal fans, all 37 of them. This is your Lord and Master Immune to Gravity coming in with The Last Human, an Adventure Time fanfiction reading uh, written by Ruby Sword. I pre-read it, so it'll be there'll be a lot less mess-ups than last time. Yeah, last time I was just really tired, and I wasn't speaking very clearly, and, uh, you know, it was just, it was really hot. It just wasn't very pleasant. So, without further ado, I give to you words. I'm ten years old. Jake and I will walk through the grasslands along the eastern side of the river that forms the border between the forest and the candy kingdom to the west. We've traveled further than we thought we would from our old home, just south of the mountain kingdom. We miss our family, but we don't miss home. It was time for us to grow up and move on. The green backpack my mother gave me, or Jake's mother anyway, made me was starting to feel heavy. I think about asking Jake if he wants to stop and take a dip in the river, but instead I spot the tree. Its trunks is huge and sturdy, with vine-like branches that hang down from the top, creating a dome shape, and there were three slightly smaller domes covering the branches and to the side. Past the tree to the north, we can see the ice kingdom in the distance, but here, it's warm. Whoa, bro, I say to Jake. He scopes the tree and gives me a knowing look. No home? He really doesn't have to ask. I make a fish and push it towards him. He smiles and pounds it. I'm 13. I'm looking around the dark underground ruins beneath the old taffy tree forest at the base of the Candy Rock Mountains, searching for signs of life. There are none. The tribe folk I thought were humans is gone, like I knew they would be. Scared away? Probably for good. Susan's gone as well. I wanted to believe she really was a human, but I know in my heart she wasn't. She was a creature, just like the rest of them. I'm still alone. No, I'm wrong. Jake puts his com- Uh. No, I'm wrong. Jake puts a comforting hand on my shoulder, and I remember that even if I'm the last of my kind, that doesn't mean I'm really alone. I'm five years old. I'm crying into my mother's furry yellow chest because some of the forest kids were mean to me and said I didn't belong, that I wasn't a dog like my parents or my brothers. She's making a comforting shushing sound like only moms know how to do, but when I look up to her ear, I see the reluctance on her face. She tells me I do belong, that I'm loved, but that I'm not a dog. I'm a human. I listen, horrified, as she tells me about how they found me as a baby in the forest, below the lost cliffs, naked, except for my white bear hat. Helpless and alone, and they took me in. I see my brother Jake peering around the corner, listening, looking sadder than I've ever seen him. I wonder if he knew. It's the day after my 17th birthday. Princess Bubblegum is sitting next to me, and I'm arguing with her. None of that stuff used to matter before, I say to her, more to my hands than to her. You were always a princess, and I was always just a boy. And now my father has returned, and I must do what he expects of me. She sounds like she's reading from a script. I don't get it, I start to raise my voice and look at her again. You never mentioned your dad to me. I didn't even know you had one, and all of a sudden you'll do anything he says. The look of pity still on her face. Of course I have a dad. Everyone comes from somewhere. 